In this video, we're going to think about what happens if instead of using the true probability distribution to design a code using Shannon coding, we instead use some other probability distribution. And we'll see that the increase in our expected code word length can be quantified by something called relative entropy. So whenever we're designing a code, a symbol code, we have to know the true probabilities. We have to know the PIs because we're trying to minimize our expected code word length. And in particular, when we're doing Shannon coding, we need to choose our lengths. And our lengths are, we round up log base B, whatever B happens to be, of 1 over PI. And we take that to be the length. But in order to do this, we need to know the true PIs, right? You know, we have to compute this quantity. So we have to know PI in order to get the LIs, and then we use the LIs to get our code using craft that, that procedure in the craft part of the craft macmillan theorem. But in reality, in the real world, we're probably not going to get to know what the true PIs are. You know, think about like in the case of Morse and Vale, back when they were designing Morse code, Vale had to estimate the frequency with which each letter in the English alphabet occurs. And, you know, he, so in other words, he was estimating the probability with which each letter occurs. But in all likelihood, his estimates were not exactly correct. They were not exactly what they were actually going to see when they were actually sending messages. So in fact, in, in the real world, we aren't going to know the P's, but we're going to have to estimate them. So let's call our estimates QI. So QI is going to be our estimate of PI, and we'll have, so we'll now have a probability distribution uh, uh, Q, of QIs, which will be so our, our sort of approximation of the true distribution. So we can do that, but now this is, this is not going to be our lengths for our Shannon code. Now, our lengths are going to be log base B1 over QI rounded up to the nearest integer. So we can certainly do that, but what happens to our expected code word length? How bad do things get? You know, we're, we know we're, if QI is not equal to PI for all I, we're not going to be optimal anymore. So how much has our, will our, our expected code word length increase? So let's compute it. Let's, let's see what happened. Let's, let's do the calculation. So our expected code word length is sum of the li times pi. And let's see, let's, let's break this expression up here into, in, into two parts. Let's break this up as, so we started here with log base v1 over qi and we rounded it up. So we have this, since we rounded it up, we, we added some little bit so we when we rounded we added some little rounding rounding amount here which we'll call r i so r i since we just rounded to the nearest integer is going to be between zero and one just a just a little bit here so we have that and let's let's plug that guy in let's plug in this little expression for the li's so what happens if we plug that in, we can go ahead and, and distribute the PI and go ahead and move the sum through. And what we get is we get PI log, I'll drop the base B just to simplify our notation a hair, RI PI. And now, so let's think about these two quantities. So this one actually looks pretty familiar. This is exactly the thing that showed up when we were trying to minimize our expected code word length, when we did our, our change of variable, when we did our, our change of variable and, and we let QI equal one over B to the LI, that was in our, in our calculation, we did that. That's not always going to be true here though, but that's where it showed up in that calculation. So we're, we're sort of familiar with this thing. And this, let's just give this a name. This is going to be, we'll just, we're not going to be too interested in exploring this further. Let's just call this R for, for round up, round up, some inefficiency due to rounding up. It's always going to be, and by the way, this is always going to be non-negative because you know, the RIs are all non-negative and the PIs are all non-negative. 
Okay. So now let's play around with this dude right here. So what can we do with that guy? Well, we know that this quantity, remember when we were doing the minimization, we found that this was minimized when QI or when QI equals PI. So this is always greater or equal to the entropy because when QI equals PI, we get the entropy. So maybe the thing to do is try to sort of make this look like entropy. So how so to make this look like entropy, what can we do? Well, let's let's try the following. Let's let's do this. Let's plug in so we can multiply and divide by PI. So we have PI times 1 over PI. The PIs of course cancel. So this is the same and we still have our R hanging out here. And the log is going to break up this product. So I'm trying to make this look like entropy. I'm trying to get, get some expression here that involves entropy. So now if I break up that log, right, I'm going to have PI log PI over QI plus I'll move the sum through and distribute the PIs. PI log 1 over PI. And then we still have our little R hanging out here. And this is what I was aiming for. I wanted to get something involving the entropy. And of course, this is exactly the entropy right here. This is the entropy. I'll say this is H of P, whatever, you know, base B. I'm, I'm sort of dropping the bases because, you know, it's, but you should understand that, that there's always a base B here for the log and for the entropy. And so now we, we see, we can see how much we have sort of increased our expected code word length by using this different set of probabilities from the true probabilities, right? Because this now we see that L, L equals this, this function right here of the P's and the Q's plus the entropy plus this rounding, rounding sort of inefficiency here. So let's give this thing a name. Let's call, let's give this a name. This seems like an important thing. So let's call this something. And in fact, well, let's we may as well use what it's really called. This is called the relative entropy, and it's denoted by d of uh, p with a sort of double vertical bars. You shouldn't read too much into the vertical bars here. And sometimes this is also denoted k l p q. It's called also sometimes called the KL divergence, the kolbach leibler divergence, because it was introduced by Kolbach and Leibler, also called the relative entropy. And so we now have that our expected code word length is equal to the entropy plus the relative entropy between P and Q plus this rounding inefficiency. And so we can now characterize very precisely how much using the wrong probability distribution affected things. And we also get this extra little bonus here, this bonus that we see that we can, we can decompose our expected length in terms of these three parts. So this part is, let's call that the rounding, rounding inefficiency Let's call, so this part is the mismatch inefficiency. We'll, we'll just call it that. The mismatch inefficiency because that's the inefficiency, the increase in our expected code length resulting from using the wrong probability distribution. And H here is, of course, you know, that's just our entropy. That's sort of the, the lower limit. So this is the, this is the, the lower, lower bound. So this gives us a very nice interpretation of the relative entropy in addition to in addition to letting us quantify how much using how much using the wrong probability distribution sort of messed things up. And the reason why it's important to have or it's it's nice to have that sort of this sort of interpretation is that later on we're going to take a much closer look at relative entropy and we'll explore lots of its properties and stuff. Because relative entropy, it turns out, 
is just a, a magnificent function. It's very, very extraordinarily useful in many, many parts of, uh, especially in statistics and, and probability more generally. Now, earlier, I mentioned after we went through the proof that the entropy is a lower bound on your expected code word length, I mentioned that there's a quick, slick proof of that fact using relative entropy. And that proof is follows directly from this, this very simple calculation that we just did. Because the relative entropy, the KL divergence, is always non-negative. This is always greater or equal to zero. Greater or equal to zero. And since we know that R is also greater or equal to zero, remember, because all the little RIs were positive or non-negative and all the PIs are non-negative, then that implies that this whole quantity right here, that this, that this part, well, th this part is non-negative and this part is non-negative. And so we see that this whole thing, that L is greater or equal to the entropy of P, right? Because this was... This was L, blah, blah, blah. This part's greater or equal to zero. This part's greater or equal to zero. So that's a quick proof of the, that thing that we worked so hard to prove before. But in fact, it's, it's not really a shortcut because proving the fact that the relative entropy is non-negative involves some, some work. But it turns out that, that the work that we did actually allows us to prove to go the other way and prove that in fact, the relative entropy is non-negative. And why is that? Well, it follows just, again, from this very same calculation, right? We showed, let me write it down here, earlier when we were, so when we were doing that proof that the entropy is a lower bound, we showed that this quantity here, that this was bounded below, you know, when we were minimizing overall probability distributions, that this was greater or equal to the entropy. This was greater or equal to the entropy. Let me put it, put it here. And by our little calculation just above, what we, what we showed was that this is also equal to the entropy plus the relative entropy of P with Q. And so, of course, you know, cancel, cancel the entropies, and we get that the relative entropy between P and Q is non-negative. So in fact, all that work we did was was worthwhile because now we get this other nice result, this, this bonus result that the relative entropy for discrete distributions at least is non-negative, right? Because here, so I sort of went through that quickly. When we were doing that minimization, we were minimizing this quantity subject to the constraints that the Qs had to sum to one. Remember, that was our that was our constraint. And you know, since any you know, if you have some positive numbers that sum to one, that's a probability distribution. So what we were minimizing was we were minimizing this over all probability distributions QI. Okay, so later we're we're going to explore relative entropy in more detail. But let me make a, a brief comment about it right now, which is just so that you're aware. One thing which can be a little bit confusing at first is that sometimes people call this the KL, they call the, they refer to this as a distance, the KL distance. But this is not a distance metric in the, the analytic sense of the word distance metric. And the reason is because it's not symmetric. In other words, the relative entropy between P and Q is not necessarily equal to the relative entropy between Q and P. So this is not true in, this is not, does not generally hold. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's not true that they're, that they are going to be equal in general. So in general, they are not equal. Now that said, even though it's not actually a distance metric, oftentimes it can be used in, 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 in sort of l in lieu of a distance metric. It sort of behaves sort of like a distance metric. And so oftentimes, you know, you can think about relative entropy as quantifying the, the, so the, the sort of uh, distance, heuristically speaking, or intuitively speaking, between two probability distributions. So that's the way to think about the relative entropy. And that interpretation, that intuitive interpretation, 
holds true in this example here because when p is very close to q you know when our estimates are very good then we would expect that that this mismatch in efficiency should be smaller and so that's that's sort of one way to think about this is thinking about this as as sort of in some sense intuitively the distance between p and q but you should always bear in mind that in fact it's it's not a distance because it, it's not symmetric and a distance metric needs to be symmetric that's one of the properties of a distance metric